In the early 1990s, the skateboard company World Industries was at the top of its game. Founded by the legendary Steve Rocco, the team sported some of the most iconic skateboarders in the world, including Rodney Mullen, Daywon Song, and Kareem Campbell, just to name a few. Known for its edgy image and marketing, World Industries was the coolest skateboard brand for the younger generation of the 1990s. However, by the early 2000s, World Industries sales began to dwindle and the company was becoming less and less popular among skaters. From there, the company changed hands several times until settling with Golden Viking Sports in 2014, which seems like a parent company for a few outdoor sporting good companies and a random cookware company for whatever reason. Now, the last time I've seen a World Industries board in the wild was like 2010. Until today. But with this company changing hands several times and now as part of a parent company that also sells Dutch ovens, I have to wonder, is World Industries still a good skateboard company? I came across this skateboard when I was picking up some ping pong balls at Big Five Sporting Goods. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a World Industries board on the shelf and I was blown away. When I got closer to the board, I noticed the $30 price tag, which made me very confused because in my mind, World Industries is still a reliable skateboard company. I had to get to the bottom of this, so I bought one and we're going to check it out today. I'll be going through each part of this skateboard and giving it a rating on a scale of 1 to 10. And then at the end, I'll give an overall rating as well as my personal recommendation. Before we jump into the review, let's talk about the specs of the skateboard. The deck itself is a 7.75 inch skateboard and everything on this board is World Industries branded. There were a few different graphic options at Big Five, but I had to go with Flame Boy because, you know, <laughs> I'm always hot. I sweat a lot, okay? I'm assuming the trucks and bearings are also World Industries branded, but they don't have any markings to tell otherwise. One of the first things I notice about this World Industries board is that it's wrapped in plastic. And if you've seen my previous board review videos, then you already know that's a red flag. Additionally, the other thing I noticed right away is that these trucks are plastic, which is another huge red flag, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Finally, a quick disclaimer, I am reviewing this World Industries Complete sold by Big Five Sporting Goods. There are a few other World Industry Complete boards floating around online through other sellers, but I do not know the quality of those and if it's different from this one. So please don't come at me in the comments, I'm sensitive. Now let's dive into this review starting with the skateboard deck. Let's start with the cons. The graphic on this board looks like it was cheaply printed on this wood. A well-crafted skateboard graphic will blend effortlessly with the wood of the deck, creating an almost seamless connection where the wood and design meet. This World Industry skateboard gives the appearance and feel that this was just like a giant sticker pressed on a blank skateboard. Just by rubbing my hand on my own personal skateboard and then on the World Industries board, you can tell there is a huge quality of difference there. The wood on the skateboard though, actually do be kind of thick. That's not necessarily a positive or a negative thing. Sure, it means that the board won't snap under pressure, but the quality of the wood is kind of cheap, so it doesn't make that big of a difference. The thickness of the board does give it a nice weight, but the wood just, it just feels cheap. I don't know how else to describe it. However, there was one really positive thing about this skateboard deck. To my surprise, the skateboard deck actually had quite a bit of pop. I could easily do kickflips, and I even landed a heel flip on the thing. Overall though, that one big positive doesn't make an overall difference, so I'm giving the deck a 3 out of 10. It's not the worst skateboard deck I've ever used, but it is far from the top. Okay, now let's move on to the grip tape. I want to give props to World though for actually using real grip tape on this board. A lot of these retail boards will just use paint on the top of the board, and so that's a positive. Here's the thing though, the grip tape isn't terrible, it gets the job done, it prevents you from sliding around, but that's really about it. Also for some reason, the grip tape on this World Industries board is like ultra black. 
here's a comparison of my board next to the world board. I'm assuming they're using some bulk cost-effective grip tape and cut some corners to make this board as cheap as possible. It's fine, okay? It's, it's just fine. So overall, I give it a 4 out of 10. Okay, so this is where things start to really fall off the rails. And I'm going to talk about the wheels and bearings before I talk about the trucks because they kind of work together to cause some serious issues with this board. The wheels are okay. They're a bit of a harder wheel, which would be good if you're using them at like a skate park or a tennis court, somewhere with really smooth concrete. But if you're wanting to use this board to ride around the neighborhood, these wheels are not going to be for you. And I would assume that most people that would buy the skateboard are beginners who are interested in skateboarding and would just ride around their neighborhood. And if you're one of those people, these wheels ain't it, chief. And now for the bearings. The bearings are the worst bearings I've ever used in my life. And that's including that crappy board I reviewed from Target a while back. These bearings and wheels literally do not spin. You can give that wheel the biggest, strongest, media spin, and that thing's gonna spin for negative three seconds. These bearings and wheels make it literally impossible for you to get speed, set up for a trick, and then perform the trick before coming to a complete halt. And even if you do manage to perform the trick, you're instantly thrown forward when you land because the wheels come to a complete stop. It honestly feels like I'm using skater trainers with this board because they literally prevent me from moving. So I guess if you want a more expensive, worse version of skater trainers, if you're in that weird demographic, then this is for you. I think it's no surprise at all that I'm giving the wheels and bearings a 1 out of 10, and I'm only giving it 1 point because it actually looks like a wheel, and it's not like a cube or something. That's the only reason, it's, it's a pity point, okay? And now we move on to the trucks. And boy oh howdy, it's rough. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, these trucks are plastic and they feel extremely cheap. I'll admit that I ride my trucks a little bit tighter than the average skateboarder, but even when I tightened these bad boys as much as I could, they still felt incredibly loose. Anytime you see a skateboard with plastic trucks, do yourself a favor, do an immediate 180 and call the cops. Plastic trucks are so dangerous because they're so cheaply made that they could actually break or even just get you some major wheel bite and cause an injury. But these trucks do have some thick risers underneath them, so at least it'll prevent you from getting some wheel bite. It's kind of like they created their own problem by adding the plastic trucks and then they put the risers on them to try to prevent the wheel bite. And it's like if you would have just made better trucks, you wouldn't need the thick risers. You dingus. The combination of these terrible trucks and the god-awful wheels and bearings makes this one miserable ride. So overall, I'm giving the trucks also a 1 out of 10. So now let's tally up the scores and get ourselves an average, and we're getting a 2.25 out of 10. So in a polite way, you could say that this board is dookie. It's kind of a shame because World Industries used to be like the king of skateboards, and now they're just bottom of the barrel. I guess even the mighty have to fall though. I wish that World Industries could still be out there making quality skateboards and amazing video parts, but I guess their parent company would rather use their nostalgic logos and characters to make a quick buck, instead of trying to be a part of the skateboard community that it helped create. Overall, I'm disappointed, but it's kind of what I expected when I walked up to that skateboard and saw it wrapped in plastic. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you wouldn't mind hitting like and maybe even consider subscribing if you want to see more skateboard content like this in the future, that'd be rad. And as always, have fun, good luck, and keep shredding the gnar.